After breaking out in the 1960s thanks to performances and hits like Darling and Dr. Zhivago, British actress Julie Christie seemed poised to become one of the biggest stars in the world, but the actress decided to pursue her own path instead of becoming a megastar working only sporadically in the decades since. One thing that's often credited with inspiring the actress to eschew Hollywood superstardom is her longtime friendship with fellow actor Warren Beatty. Join Facts First as we finally understand why Julie Christie left Hollywood. Julie Christie was born April 14, 1940 in India. Her father was a tea planter, and she grew up on his plantation for a period before eventually being sent off to England for a formal education. During her early education, Julie became proficient in both French and Italian, and she ended up traveling to Paris as a teen to finish her studies. While in France, Julie had some experience with the artists of the area. Julie's mother was a painter, and the future actress felt she might like to become one herself. While she toyed around with the idea of becoming a painter, she ended up becoming an actress instead. She returned to England and enrolled in the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama in London making her professional debut on stage as a member of the Frinton Repertory of Essex. This was in 1957, after which point it was only a few years before Julie came to Hollywood. Though she had broken out on stage, she eventually decided she preferred film. Working on stage had allowed her to travel, and she found herself in Hollywood by the 1960s. In 1961, she made her first appearance on screen. This was in a TV series, A for Andromeda, and her first role in a film came the following year. This was in the 1962 comedy Crooks Anonymous, and she appeared in another comedy called The Fast Lady that same year. A more notable role came in the 1963 film Billy Liar, though her true breakout appearance didn't come until she was cast in the 1965 feature Darling, part of the swinging 60s movement. After that breakout role, Julie's star status was cemented when she appeared in the blockbuster Dr. Zhivago later that year. Between the two roles, one could see the dueling sides of Julie's personality that would eventually cause her to leave Hollywood for good. Her role in Dr. Zhivago represented her star potential, while her role in Darling represented her intrinsic ties to the counterculture. Since these two hit performances, the actress has chosen to perform more in roles she thinks will be artistically rewarding than roles she thinks will be financially successful. She's also chosen to work relatively sporadically in the decades since, which has often prevented her from being as big of a name as some of her contemporaries. Still, she performed in a few more notable roles over the course of the 60s and has popped up multiple times in the industry since then. The first instance of her choosing artistic integrity over commercial potential was in the film Fahrenheit 451. Julie had immense respect for the film's French director as well as its rebellious themes. Though Julie was proud of her work, the film was met with mixed reception upon its initial release. After appearing in 1966's Fahrenheit 451, Julie could be seen in 1968's Petulia alongside George C. Scott. This film proved to be the actress's last big financial success, though she had some critical success in 1971 thanks to her role in the Robert Altman feature McCabe and Mrs. Miller. Julie appeared in the film alongside Warren Beatty, whom she had struck up a personal relationship with during the late 60s. Some credit Warren with inspiring Julie to choose artistic integrity over Hollywood fame. Julie made her first public appearance alongside Warren Beatty at the premiere of 1967's Bonnie and Clyde. The film was a monumental critical and commercial success for the actor. Given that Warren served as the film's producer in addition to being its star, the money he made from the picture essentially meant he was never going to have to work another day in his life. Because of this, Warren became much more interested in art and activism. Apparently, he instilled this same attitude in Julie Christie throughout their seven-year-long romance. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First for more and stick around for more about Julie Christie. After the financial success of Bonnie and Clyde, Warren Beatty decided he only wanted to work in film if the project really caught his attention. This has led to the actor working only sporadically over the ensuing decades. Julie Christie was apparently inspired by this attitude and decided to exhibit the same ethic when choosing her own projects. Julie still continued working throughout the 70s, and her latest acting credit was in 2017. But she's been much pickier about the projects she's been involved with ever since meeting and striking up a love affair with Warren Beatty. Though their relationship only lasted seven years, it resulted in a friendship that's still going on today. Throughout the 70s, Julie Christie acted in a few projects but turned down roles in many more. 
Some of the projects she ended up appearing in include Don't Look Now, Shampoo, and Heaven Can Wait. Nicholas Rogue, the cinematographer on Fahrenheit 451, directed 1973's Don't Look Now. Julie had struck up a friendly relationship with the filmmaker on the set of the previous film, so she said yes when offered a role. Meanwhile, her roles in Shampoo and Heaven Can Wait were taken so she could continue working alongside friend and lover Warren Beatty. But she's since expressed some regret about appearing in Shampoo due to the views she feels it promoted about women. There were also many more roles that Julie Christie turned down. One such role was Jacqueline Kennedy in the 1978 feature The Greek Tycoon. Another role she dropped out of was the female love interest in Paul Schrader's 1980 drama American Gigolo. Many say the end of the actress's Hollywood fame came when she turned down the role in friend Warren Beatty's Reds. The role had been written for her, and the film was a passion project from her longtime friend and former lover. She turned down the proposed role not because she didn't respect the work, but she felt she wasn't right for the part. Julie was adamant that an American woman should play the part, and she may have been right. The part that was written for her ended up going to Diane Keaton, and it got Diane an Academy Award nomination. Although Julie opted out of playing the role that Warren had written for her in Reds, the film was still dedicated to her. Over the course of the 80s, Julie became even less involved in film than she was in the 70s, preferring instead to dedicate herself to activism. But she did appear in a few notable features throughout the 80s that she deemed artistically driven. These included The Return of the Soldier, as well as Gold Diggers and Heat and Dust. While the roles may have been personally fulfilling for the actress, they didn't result in much commercial or critical acclaim. In the 90s, Julie came back into the spotlight with the pair of films Hamlet and Afterglow. Hamlet came out in 96, and Julie had taken on her role at the behest of director Kenneth Branagh. She appeared alongside Nick Nolte in 1997's Afterglow, and her roles in both of these films were given immense praise from critics and audiences alike. It looked like Julie Christie once again had a shot at superstardom, but she still wasn't interested. She's continued working in the years since her popular performance in Afterglow, though her appearances have been more sporadic. Her last credited work was in 2017, though it remains uncertain if this means she's retired for good. The actress married longtime love interest Duncan Campbell in 2007, and the two are still together. Duncan is an investigative journalist, and 81-year-old Julie Christie likely finds spending time with him much more interesting than taking on new work in the entertainment industry. Some of her more notable roles in the new millennium include turns in the 2004 family films Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban and Finding Neverland. Now it's time to hear from you. Did you know about Julie Christie's passion for activism over commercial success? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.